I'm Evelyn Tan, actress, variety show host, once first mate on the family boat, and proud mum of four. And this year, my third child, Wei, enrolled in Secondary 1. Wei's new school is implementing aspects of full SBB this year. While I know full SBB stands for full subject-based banding, I know little else about it. I want to learn and, well, I have an opportunity. It's really a chance of a lifetime for a parent to be able to see what secondary school life is all about now these days. To attend lessons, to hear from parents, teachers and students firsthand. Yes, I'm heading back to school to experience the new school of thought that is reshaping our education landscape firsthand. Full SBB builds on the positive outcomes of an existing scheme in secondary schools called SBB, or Subject-Based Banding. SBB gives secondary school students the flexibility to offer PSLE subjects, English language, mathematics, science and their mother tongue language at a level they qualify for. And Full SBB is an expansion of SBB. Under Full SBB, Eligible students may offer humanity subjects at a more demanding level from secondary two onwards. Eligible students may also offer some subjects at a less demanding level. This flexibility recognises our students' diverse strengths and interests and provides them the opportunity to enjoy learning subjects at a pace suited to them. Under full SBB, the Express, normal academic and normal technical streams will be phased out. Instead, three posting groups will facilitate entry into secondary schools for P6 students. These posting groups will guide the subject levels that students can offer only at the start of secondary one. Beyond that, students will have opportunities to take subjects at different subject levels that best suit their strengths and interests. There will be three subject levels, General 1, 2 and 3, or G1, G2 and G3. And they are mapped respectively to today's standards. G1 is equivalent to the current NT level, G2 to our current NA level, and G3 to our current Express level. With subjects being offered at different subject levels, students can choose to take them at the level that suits their learning pace. For example, a student can take Mathematics at G3 and English Language at G2. 28 schools have been piloting aspects of full SBB since 2020. And progressively, more and more secondary schools have started implementing it since 2022 and 2023. By 2024, 120 secondary schools will be implementing the scheme. Now, every one of these schools have been given the full autonomy to decide how best to implement the various aspects of full SBB. So I think it'd be quite interesting to find out how they do it differently. I'll be meeting those who have been on the front line of this evolution in our education system over the last few years. First up is Mrs. Anba Saroja, the principal of Whitley Secondary School, which piloted full SBB in 2020. Mrs. Anba, what is full SBB like for Whitley? Okay. Students are able to do subjects at their ability level. So let me give you an example. So if a student is posted to the normal academic stream, but he or she is very capable in mathematics, he can now offer the subject at the express level. So that's one key feature of full SBB. So how has Whitley piloted aspects of full SBB and what were some of the considerations that you had? We decided that we will do full SBB in two blocks. So one block will have students of three streams together and the other block will have students from two streams together. And that we felt will help us because we had to consider timetable, we had to consider teacher deployment for the subjects as well as the form classes. HQ gave us the autonomy, how we wanted to design our classes and what's the approach we wanted to take. We took the hybrid approach, first of all, as a trial and error. We wanted to see whether that will be manageable. 
because the first year worked out so well for us, we have decided to continue with this hybrid approach. The experience for Whitley has been really very, very encouraging. We find that the students have been mixing very well together and the teachers have also been happy, you know, being form teachers of these classes. It was great hearing from Mrs Anba. And now, I'm meeting Mathematics Head of Department, Mr Ko Wei Ping, and Character and Citizenship Education Head of Department, Ms Lo Hui Yi, to get an idea of what it means on the ground and the challenges they face. I think you're looking at one of it. Okay. Uh, the timetabling was one of a big challenge. Uh -huh. When we have students in uh, different streams in the same class, that will also mean that we need to have them take the subject at the same time. Mm -hmm. So that means that, uh, for instance, if I want to have English, then all the classes must have English at the same time. Mm -hmm. We also fear that students may find it very difficult to understand the timetable. Mm -hmm. So what students will get will not be this. We will print out a PDF uh, form for them. So they will see something like this. Own personal timetable okay. that they can refer to. Yeah. Correct. Okay, yeah, that's then right. this is a lot clearer. Yes. Wow, that's a lot of painstaking effort that you put in for each individual student. You print Correct. out an individual timetable for them. Yes. Wonderful. So, you know, with all changes, I'm sure you know, parents will be naturally concerned. You know, um, what were some of the main concerns, and especially with these kind of movements? <laughs> I think initially, the parents were concerned about timetable, mm -hmm. whether is it too complicated for the child, especially when they're coming from a primary school, right? Mm -hmm. So suddenly, they have like so many subjects. We have to assure the parents that we actually label it with the subject as well as the teacher's name so that it's easier for the child to actually find the classroom. And then also we have like the team of teachers, uh, be it year head or one of the uh, staff, to actually patrol the area just to ensure that we bring them to the right venue so that they are familiar with the different locations in school. After hearing what went into making full SBB work, I want to take my hat off to the teachers. But now, it's my chance to immerse myself in the full SBB experience. OK, hurry up, people. We only have one period today. I'll be crashing Mr Ko's Sec 1 maths class. So come in, settle down, take out your PLDs. It's going to be literally my first day attending class in over 20 years. All right, everyone. Good morning, class. All right, please be seated. What you, what you... This is an NA maths class where students are learning maths at the NA level, which will be equivalent to G2 under full SBB from 2024. What do you know about gradient? What do I teach you about gradient? It includes both students from the NA stream and students from the NT stream who have opted to take maths at a more demanding level. Okay. What is the power of X? The y equals mx plus c. Thank you very much. All right, question two. 2y two equals to 4x plus 5. Is this equation a straight line? Yeah, it's not a straight line. Is that your final answer? Okay, very good. So this gives me a reason to be here, so that I can tell you this is a straight line. All right. So why is Listening to the class, I couldn't tell who was from NA and who was from NT. And they all seem to learn well together. What's the formula for gradient? Thank you very much. Clearly, the students were on top of the subject. But what really surprised me was the questionnaire the students took at the end of the class. It wasn't about maths, but about the lesson itself. Yes, if you want to refer to your notes, feel free. These are things that we have gone through the past few lessons. It was such a quick and simple way for the teacher to gauge if the different students were all following the lesson or not. Overall, it was a most interesting and well-run class. Now, due to timetabling limitations, Mr Ko has only one period or 35 minutes of maths lesson with his class. Within the 35 minutes that Mr Ko had, he was able to settle the students down get them to review a concept that was previously taught, introduce the new concept for today, and then get them to work on some examples and summarize and reiterate. That was truly impressive. All right, thank you, class. Thank you, Mr. Cole. Thank you very much.
But how do the students themselves feel about full SBB? I had a quick chat with a bunch of Mr. Ko students. So do you think that this full SBB is a good thing that happened to you? I think one of the greatest things so far has been like we have created a very big bond with mm -hmm. the NA and NT people. So you didn't realize that they were actually any different from you? No. Ah. I feel that we are all the same. Okay. No matter if they are NA or NT, we are one class, one community. I feel like Express students, um, we will be more like towards study, but they will spread their time for interests, hobbies then study. So it's well mixed by social life and study. Okay, what about for yourself? I believe that uh, no matter which stream we are in, we have our own strength and weaknesses. And that's where we need to understand each other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now that I have a better idea of full SBB, I want to dig deeper and to see how classes for different subject levels are conducted. So, I'm headed to another school to find out. This year, 2023, about two-thirds or more than 90 of our secondary schools are currently implementing aspects of full SBB. It was first piloted in 28 secondary schools back in 2020. Another 69 schools joined in 2022 and 2023. And in 2024, the rest of our secondary schools implementing full SBB will come on board. Like Whitley Secondary, West Spring first offered full SBB to all Secondary 1 students in 2020. I'm curious how the teachers are managing with all the changes. So, I'm meeting with the Science Head of Department, Mr Chan Chen Rong, and Year Head for Lower Secondary Levels, Mr Faroni Sukai Mi. So, what are the demands the teachers need to manage and how does the school help them with that? So for the subject teachers, one challenge they will have to overcome is to be more aware of the diverse uh, group of students in the class. So that is an additional consideration that teachers have to keep in mind of when designing and planning for lessons. Other than that, teachers also have to do more levels of preparation. For example, a teacher who used to be able to specialise in a certain stream will now have to be prepared to teach across different levels and uh, different uh, courses as well. What used to be a case where the teacher only has to teach Sec 4 math it is no longer the case. It's the same teacher probably has to do maybe Sec 3A math, Sec 4 E math, and lower Sec E math at the normal academic stream, for example. So that agility may not have been needed before, right? But now it is more efficient for almost every teacher. Another demand for the teachers is the ability of the teacher to pick up students who have higher needs versus those students who are more self-directed. A teacher has to be able to sieve out within a class who are the students who are struggling and we will need to cater the lessons, activities and the plans to help those students to catch up with the rest of the group. Yeah, so they need to be able to make use of the assessment and assessment feedback to give them uh, accurate information towards planning of the lessons and helping the students. And how does the school assist them? There's always ongoing training for the teachers, sharing sessions and networking across schools. There's also um, MOE level uh, engagement and uh, sharing of opportunities for different schools to come together. I'm astounded by how much teachers have had to adapt and I want to see them in action. Geography teacher, Madam Ruhaiza Hassan, has kindly invited me to sit in on two of her classes. We will be doing geographical investigation, okay? Now let's look at the first is taught at the express level, which will correspond to the G3 subject level under full SBB. I want you to write your answer, yes or no. Will you drink water from this bottle? No. In this class, students sit in groups of about three to five, which seems to encourage interaction and discussion among them. What about the colour of the water? It's cloudy. Have you written it down? It's cloudy. With bubbles on the surface of the water, I won't drink it. And it smells very fragrant. And you suspect that this is salt water. 
The class runs for one period or 35 minutes, which feels quite pacey. Students are given just enough time to listen and process the different points Madam Ruhaiza is making. Now, let me reveal. A is dishwashing liquid. Did you get that? B is actually my favourite green tea. Huh? Yeah. 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 Hello. Then, for comparison, the next class is taught at the NA level, which will be known as G2 under full SBB. So observe the colour, observe the smell. Okay. Immediately, I notice differences in the way that Madam Ruhaiza is conducting the same lesson in the second class. For one, the students are seated in pairs instead of in groups like the previous class. Discuss with your seat partner, what is that? Will you drink? Will you not drink? This class also moves at a different pace, with more check-ins by Madam Ruhaiza, <laughs> and she has two periods to teach the class instead of one. What is this? That's unknown chemical. That's what Rachie say. This is water and food dye. So is it drinkable? Yes. yes. What is D? It is a mixture of vinegar and water. Now what is E? So, E is actually a layer of oil on the water. Is it drinkable? No. It's not drinkable. No, yeah, okay. I have spoken to... By the time we finished the second class, I felt like I knew all about water pollution. Please don't stay behind. Okay? Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, teachers. Okay. Madam Ruhaiza had a busy morning, but after her lessons were done, I sat down with her to better understand what I had observed. So, Madam Rehaiza, how do you prepare yourself to teach at various subject levels? I think for all of us who are teaching humanities like geography and history, it's no different because uh, it is something that we've been teaching for years and years. What varies is the pedagogies used in um, the classes that we teach, depending on the learning needs of the students. So, in your teaching, how do you cater to the different learning needs of different profiles of students in your class? It really depends on the class, really, and how the class has been performing in their tests and weighted assessments. So, that will uh, warrant me to use different pedagogies depending on their learning needs. Uh. Like, for instance, what you saw just now in my express class, I was able to actually do collaborative learning with them because they're a really enthusiastic bunch of students students who can really effect positive changes when I put them in groups. Mm -hmm. Yeah, whereas uh, the other class, uh, over the last few months I've been teaching them, I feel that at this point of time, they are best learning together with their seat partners and exchanging ideas with their seat partners because putting them in groups uh, can also distract them, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, we won't be able to achieve our objectives for the lesson. Yeah. Just now, you also mentioned that you know you would assess the class to see whether there was in-depth understanding before you move on, correct? Yeah. So, does that happen with different profiles of learners? Uh, yes. I will quickly do a check on them. So, if you observe just now, I'll ask questions and when I go one-to-one, -one, I will also test them whether they've understood certain concepts, certain things I've discussed. You haven't gotten D, okay. What did you say about A? So, from your existing students, have you identified uh, any potential candidates, you know, to offer the subject at a more demanding level next year? Oh, yes, definitely. Usually, what I do is, that at the start of the lesson, in the first month, I was already telling them, oh, you do normal acad geography, but do you know there is a chance for you to actually do express geography if you do very well for SEC 2, end of your exam? So, I think that motivates some of them. So, when they hear, oh, I can do geography at uh, express level in SEC 2 and SEC 3, so they get very excited. Again, I want to chat with the students to find out how they feel about all this. So, you know, we're coming into this, what we call full SBB. Um, what do you think about this? Uh, this arrangement, you know, how does it work out for you? I guess it will help the students catch up in their studies or the academy. Full SBB is uh, helping them to learn so that they can um, they don't gain a lot of stress from the studies. Can strengthen relationships and maybe understand people much better instead of you know, judging people by their streams. If you have some difficulties you face while doing homework, you can ask them for help. Do the students' experiences align with the principal's aspiration for West Spring as it continues on its full SBB journey? 
I meet with Principal Belinda Chan. So Mrs Chan, what do you hope to observe here at West Spring through the full SPB experience? Actually, we are seeing some of it already. Mm -hmm. I think the initiative has gone on quite well in schools. We do have conversations with students quite often in the school. And usually I would like to ask them, you know, how does it feel to be in a class with so many students and of different backgrounds, you know, different starting points. Well, the amazing thing is that they do see the strength and talents that their friends bring with them into the class. So it's quite nice, you know, that they have been able to find ways to relate to different people of different backgrounds. So I think that exchange in terms of understanding each other better, being able to empathise, being very inclusive in terms of who they are uh, meeting in the class helps. The other thing that's very nice is that we have students by now who have attempted the national exams and these are students who have taken subjects at a more demanding level. Mm -hmm. They have done well. Some of them may have done better than their friends who were from the express level. Mm -hmm. So it goes to show that it helps them to find uh, passion in, in their own learning, to be more confident. It plays out quite nicely, you know, that they no longer feel stigmatised. Of course, we also have parents who are quite happy that they are children are offered a higher level subject because these children obviously have that strength and interest and then now they have the opportunity to further that strength and interest. So that helps in terms of the growth mindset of students. That builds their confidence for sure and it actually motivates them to learn in even different other subjects of you know the, the stream that they are in. Now, I also understand that you know you were previously from Peihua where you helped implement full SBB. Um, could you share with us how your experience there has helped in your decision-making process here at West Spring? So I think it's more of the different experiences that we've gone through. Uh, what were things that worked well? What were things that didn't work so well? You know, um, so that experience was something that I could transfer to my team here. In Peihua, we were using social network analysis tools to help us make sense of the social mixing within the form class. So that experience then helped me to share with the team that this is possibly a good tool that we could use and then put that in place uh, last year when I came into the school. What Mrs. Belinda Chan shared about social mixing in form classes has got me wondering about how it all works now that students take different subjects with different classmates. Does the form class as I know it still exist? So far, I've attended maths and geography classes to understand how subject-based banded lessons are conducted. But with students splitting up all the time for lessons, what about the form class? Does that still exist? I'm at Peihua Secondary School to find out. It turns out with full SBB, students will take six common curriculum subjects in what are called mixed form classes. Three are examinable, art, design and technology, and food and consumer education and the other three non-examinable, character and citizenship education, music and physical education. Students in the same form class spend one third of the time together taking these classes regardless of their learning pace. So the content and learning outcomes of these subjects are taught at a common level that is accessible by all students. And teachers will adopt a range of approaches to teach the subjects catering to the different learning needs of the students. Today, I'm going to demonstrate how to make a basic cupcake so that we can use it for the subsequent lessons whereby we're going to experiment with the different amount of fats. OK, go. I had the chance to sit in on a food and consumer education lesson with teacher Ms Ong Bibi to better understand how common curriculum classes are run. How are you doing so far? Okay? We spent two hours making cupcakes together. Okay, now, they are all from the same recipe. But how come the result is so different? So, Ms. Ong, how does a teacher teach common curriculum lessons with students of diverse profiles? 
teachers will actually use differentiated instructions. Mm -hmm. We will tend to observe some students might need a little bit more help in terms of further specific instructions given. Mm -hmm. So we will go to them and then to check whether are they okay and then if not which part of it they don't understand, then I'll repeat or give more guided instructions or guided questions for them. Do you then take into consideration um, the students' profiles, like, you know, for example, the stream that they come from? We don't. Mm -hmm. For full SBB, actually, we don't uh, differentiate in by streams anymore. Actually, the differences among the students in terms of their um, academic capability actually is no longer obvious. We know their learning needs through the daily interactions, and that is where we will customise according to the students' needs and their preferences. And that's where we will weave in our instructions to the students whereby they will learn progressively in the lessons. Because we have progressive assessment in terms of practical skills, and after that, when they go back to our classrooms, when we have theory lesson, we assess on their knowledge, on their concepts, through, again, presentation, through project work, and all this will slowly add up to their final grades. Mm. From there, we will uh, guide them accordingly and even give them uh, extra uh, lessons after school, one-to-one, uh, -one, before they go for their um, exams at the end of the year. Okay. You all can share. Oh, wonderful. Thank you so much. <laughs> this for us. This for us. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. In addition to the six common curriculum subjects, Peihua also conducts its applied learning program in robotics and programming in mixed form classes, which gives students the chance to explore new ideas and try out new skills. Okay, so these are the components. So very quickly, let us just recall the functionalities of the M5 goal, because later on, as you proceed with the ideation process, you do need to consider and infuse some of these functions in your solution. So IoT or Internet of Things is actually a network of devices, okay? Later on, as I actually show you some examples, some of you will tell me, hey, actually I'm using this at home already. I'm learning why the school chooses to do so from Head of Department of Craft and Innovation, Mrs. Jaslyn Ang. We aim to empower and equip our students with technological and thinking skills with the intended learning outcomes being common for all students across all streams in the same level. The students will have opportunity to work with one another, tapping on each other's strengths and interests as they innovate solutions to solve problems uh, related to programming as well. For example, in the prototyping journey, they would need to actually build prototype as well as uh, being able to handle the programming skills. So for students who have the strength in programming, they would likely be contributing more in the programming skills itself and uh, the students who are better in crafting skills will make the prototype. Okay, make sure your project idea is clear enough. The next time I see you, I will be getting you all to do a group presentation. Alright, thank you class. Jaslyn told me that students also work in mixed teams on ALP projects related to the community and the environment. Seems like a great idea to me, but do the students feel the same way? How do you think that students from diverse background can help enrich your ALP experience? It helps us share like all of our point of views on that situation. Mm -hmm. Like for our group, we actually discussed more other topics but we decided to choose on teenagers' well-being because we think that it is uh, important to us. Some of them decided to like help with the community. I saw some of my friends working to help the elderly who have dementia. By yourself? I heard of one project which is based on sustainability of food mm. to make it more a greener world through food and not wasting that much food. So it sounds like you all have such different ideas about what you want to do, what you want to see, and learning how to come together to plan for a project in itself. Great learning experience, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. One other thing that I noted was how students were taught to communicate digitally. Everyone had a chance to post an idea, comment on a fellow student's idea and receive comments in return via online collaboration platforms. I feel, you know, even more so, students need to learn how to communicate with people from diverse backgrounds, not just in a face-to-face -face setting, but also online. Um, and I see how Peihua's 
ALP program can actually afford that opportunity and that platform for students to come together to learn how to navigate through miscommunications and learn how to clarify messages. And this will really prepare them for their work life in future. It seems like a lot of work just to give students of different backgrounds a chance to learn together. Why do schools want to do this? I ask Vice Principal Mrs. Michelle Wilman and Year Head Mr. Bernard Kang. Not just in secondary school, but even uh, beyond that, when you go and work in the workforce, it is important to appreciate and recognize uh, the strengths in different areas, and they all carry equal value. Mm. And because they're going to work with many diverse personalities, uh, some may be better at, let's say, for example, the IT part of the work, some may be better at uh, delegating tasks, mm. some are better at keeping people on track. These are very important global life skills, and I think that it's important that our kids learn all this and an opportunity to really to develop all these uh, competencies from a young age. So it's uh, an opportunity for our students to learn new skills together and in doing so they also learn to discover different strengths that each other has and different interests as well and in that way students from different backgrounds naturally find ways of bonding and coming together and leveraging on each other's strengths especially during teamwork in their various projects. Have there been any challenges in trying to implement mixed form classes here at Peihua? If you want to talk about one of the challenges that we faced, uh, perhaps was, uh, first of all, uh, number one, uh, form teachers may not get to teach uh, their students. So mm -hmm. unlike a primary school system where generally the form teacher have many contact points with mm. the kids, we had to find a solution where we are able to ensure some form of contact points. Our form teachers all teach character and citizenship education lessons to their form classes. Mm -hmm. So that helps them get to know the students, uh, particularly because character and citizenship lessons are really about various issues that the students might be facing and mm -hmm. global issues. So as students go through the lessons uh, that talk about peer relationships, friendships, managing conflicts, or sustainability issues, uh, our national education issues, the discussions then allow them to bring out different perspectives that the different students from different backgrounds have mm -hmm. uh, on these various issues. Teacher Ms. Li Sixian invited me to observe her character and citizenship education lesson with a secondary four form class. Next week, while it is SYF, your WAs are also starting. Okay, so just write a quick note to encourage the heart of your friends, okay, and then pass this to your friend. Okay, if you would like to write for more people, feel free to write it later on. Okay, so once you are done writing, I would like you to personally pass it to your friend and you can go back to your seats. Okay, so very quickly, we are now moving on to discuss the implications of geopolitical conflicts. So, so what was the experience like, you know, having to manage students from such diverse background in your form class? So when they selected um, these teachers, then they told us, hey, you know, uh, next year you guys are going to be the form teachers of a full subject-based learning class. So we actually went through courses where they taught us about um, growth mindset and things like that. So when we look at each student, um, we don't look at them like, oh, you are this student that is very weak academically, but we look at them in terms of um, what can they contribute in the class. So did you have to make adjustments in the way that you interact with them as a class when you are taking into account all these diverse um, personalities and diverse background? I will always have interactions to check how my form class students are doing. So uh, what we actually did is we have this um, form teacher support document. So this is something that the school created to support form teachers. So inside the document, we can see who are the subject teachers for which students in particular. I can immediately check the document and um, I can pick out who the, the subject teacher is. I will also be able to follow up with my students if they need to maybe work on a particular subject or I need to get back to the parents regarding um, a certain subject. Mm. Yeah. Speaking of parents, were there any concerns from parents about this kind of mixed form class arrangements and how did you address such concerns? I feel that the main concerns always stems from the lack of knowledge about how FSBB is carried out. Mm. So the concerns were things like, oh, um, if my child is 
someone who takes express English. Then I'm in the same class as someone who is taking NT English. Does that mean the pace of the lesson will be too fast for my child or too slow for other children? When the parents found out that students are banded based on the subjects that they are stronger in or weaker in, it helped to manage some of the concerns that they had. It really helped the parents to feel like, hey, you know, this may be a good system. So even recently when we met the parents to talk about the future of our students, because now they're in sec force, we have parents telling us that they are very glad that their own children, they are mixing with people from other streams. I now have a better sense of how three schools implemented full SBB. But as a mom, I wonder how other parents feel about this major shift in the secondary education landscape in Singapore. I mean, after all, this is very different from the time when I was a student myself many years back. And as for the students themselves, do they perceive a change in the system? How do they feel about the current school experience? I spoke to some of them to find out about what they think. I've had first-hand experience with full SBB classes. Share it with us. And I've noticed some rather encouraging and positive changes to our education system. The schools seem to have gotten the scheme off the ground pretty well too. I've already heard from the principals and the teachers. So over a one-month period, I met three different sets of students and parents from the three schools I've had the pleasure of visiting. Secondary 2 Whitley student, Mayang Desi Putri, and her dad, Momat Sani, shared with me how full SBB allows students to comfortably push themselves further. I heard that you know you were a SEC1 student when Whitley first started the full SBB program here, and you were given the option to offer a subject at a higher subject level. Can you tell us more? So basically, when I uh, received my PSLE score, mm -hmm. although I was offered the normal academic stream, uh, I scored an A for my mother tongue. So when I was in SEC 1, I was able to take my mother tongue at a higher demanding stream. So from there, I was able to take uh, my mother tongue at Express. So yeah. Mm, okay. I felt very happy when I told my dad about it. Then he was also quite happy about it as well. So it was a really good experience for me. Mm -hmm. So yeah. So I'm quite happy. I see when she go for this program, mm -hmm. right? I see a lot of improvement whereby mm. she can mix with different level of classes, mm. right? Which I guess this is quite healthy. Mm. Yeah. So you felt that it was the full SBB program that allowed her, that gave her the confidence to strive for more. Yes. Mm. Yeah. I see a lot of improvement. Right? A lot of progress on her. Were you concerned that she might not catch up? So we worry whether she able to cope up. You know. Finally, with her hard work, with her effort, you know, mm. like, she managed to go through. Kanzul Hasin and her father, Mohammad Zabir Khan, shared how motivated she was after managing to offer maths at express level. I have seen my potential in my um, going to express math. I think I can uh, push myself more to go for the full express course. Wow, that's amazing. But that will entail a lot of hard work. Are you yeah. not afraid of that? Hmm, of course not, but if I want something, I need to work hard for it. Okay. So, Kanzel's father, um, can I ask you, you know, how did you feel when you heard that your daughter was going to do uh, maths at a high level? Actually, I feel a bit worried uh, whether she can cope up or not, but uh, she's very confident mm. and so she did a... Uh, she's very happy, mm. so I'm very happy she can do more mm. and she can... Uh, can be a do express and as a good cha. Mm. Hello, thank you. From Micah Wong, a West Spring Secondary 2 student, and his mother, Gina Lim, I learned how full SBB encourages students to follow their passions. I think that because of SBB, uh, students can focus more on their talents for example, art, music, maybe because they are good at those subjects, then they can improve on it without being constrained to their stream. Full SBB allows the children to follow their passion and uh, their strengths. For me, I think uh, for children to follow their passion is one of the best things uh, that as parents we should be happy about at the end of the day. 
and Johan and his parents, Maulid Sidek and Emily Coy, told me how the full SBB model promotes the holistic development of students. I think it gives me opportunities, more interests and more skills. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've built more, more strength and gained more knowledge from, from this full SBB. My friends from Express Stream, they are fun to hang out with and they are very supportive and before my exam, I'll ask them for help. When you first heard that you know he was going to be in full SBB, did you all have any concerns? No concern, but I think it's good because uh, my child can interact, you know. Not like last time, last time, express, express, normal, normal, you see. Mm. But now, uh, when they're together, uh, they can help each other. Mm. It's good. Uh. From my point of view, I believe moving forward, SBB is better for the whole society. Mm. And I, I do believe that every student have their own expertise and uh, have their own strength. I don't want my kids to have these uh, discriminations, comparative, because when they grow up, they also will go into a working life. Mm. So they will meet all levels of people. Mm. They have to learn to help each another. And now since in school, they have this SBB and they mix all the level together. Eventually, they can learn to, you know, uh, help among their uh, schoolmates. Mm. I believe that full subject-based spending uh, will give opportunity uh, to the students to build more character. So I'm just penning down some of my reflections. You know, one of the things that I've noticed is that everyone stands to benefit from full SBB, regardless of their academic background. And one heartening thing I took away was that full SBB allows for customization of learning. And the parents I've spoken to have fully embraced it, broadening their focus beyond just academics to appreciate the other soft skills and values that their children can pick up in school. To see the full potential of full SBB, all we now need is for society to be open to more flexible pathways that a student may take and to recognise and value diverse talents and strengths that different individuals can bring to the table. So, from 2024, secondary school students will get to interact with others from a wider range of backgrounds. And as they progress through secondary school, they will have the opportunity to take subjects at levels based on their ability. Then from 2027, when students complete their secondary school education, they will sit for a common national examination and receive the Singapore Cambridge Secondary Education Certificate, or SEC, which replaces the current GCEN and O-level certificates. A student could take a combination of 6 G3 and 1 G2 subjects as part of full SBB. She then sits for the SEC exam that opens opportunities to any number of post-secondary pathways depending on her results. These include post-secondary education institutions like junior colleges and Millennia Institute, Polytechnics and ITE. Polytechnics and ITEs will also recognise a wider profile of students taking subjects at different subject levels. This will mean greater access for more students. The admissions criteria for JCs, however, will be retained to ensure students can cope with the academic rigour. I have been on a journey to understand what full SBB will mean for our secondary school system and for my son, Wei, who is now in secondary one. I'm really glad that Wei gets to experience full SBB because now he can choose his own path and focus on areas and subjects that he's good at and passionate about. And in a grander scheme of things, I'm really excited to find out how full SBB can shift the mindset of secondary school students and their parents towards education. Mm -hmm.